One of the problems that seems to make the least amount of sense to my students is often the problem of what to do when the exponent is zero. So like in this problem, two to the zero power equals what? The answer doesn't seem to make sense to my students. So I'd like to show you what the answer is, but I'd also try to like to show you why that's the answer, and hopefully that will make sense uh, after I go through a little explanation here. Before I get straight to this problem, 2 to the 0 power, let's look at a few other powers of 2. So I'd like to look at 2 to the 5th power, 2 to the 4th power, 2 to the 3rd power, 2 to the 2nd, and 2 to the 1st. So let's look at those problems first. If I am going to look at 2 to the first power. That's pretty simple. That's just 1, 2. So the answer will just be 2. But if I have 2 to the second power, that's going to be 2 times 2, knowing how to handle exponents. 2 to the second power just means two twos multiplied together. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 to the 5th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So let's figure out what these numbers actually are now. So 2 to the 1st power is just 2. 2 times 2 is obviously 4. If I have those 2 times 2 times 2, well, the 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 makes 8. Here, the 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times another 2 makes 16. And so this top one, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, times another 2 makes 32. So let me divide each of these rows now. So now we're to the question of what are we going to do if we have 2 to the 0 power? If we have 2 to the 0 power, some of my students think that that should be 0. It's not 0, but I can see why. Their reasoning would be something like, well, 2 to the second power is two twos multiplied together. 2 to the first power is 1, 2. So 2 to the 0 power should be 0, 2's. And 0 is nothing, so nothing uh, should be the number 0. But it turns out it's not. And to show you why it's not, let's kind of look at the pattern we have going here in this table. We're going from 2 up to 4, up to 8, up to 16, up to 32 as we're jumping from one row to the next each of these numbers keeps getting doubled so when we're going up the row each time we go up we are multiplying by two we can also think about it backwards what if we're going down in this from one row to the next from 32 down to 16 it's cut in half cut in half again to eight cut in half again to four so when we're going down we're actually dividing by 2. They're opposites, it makes sense. Going up, we're multiplying by 2. Going down, we're dividing by 2. So let's keep that going all the way down to here. 32 divided by 2 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And finally, the answer we've been waiting for, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 2 to the 0 power is actually 1. And it makes sense when we think of these exponents as a series of multiplication problems. So we're going to start with a base of 1, and we're going to double from there when, the base, or when we have 2 raised to a certain power. We're going to just keep doubling up from 1 and dividing by 2 when we go down. So 2 to the 0 power is 1. And if we keep that pattern going, what if we extended this table lower? 
2 to the 5th, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 0, 2 to the negative 1 power, 2 to the negative 2nd power, 2 to the negative 3rd power, and this leads into what to do with negative exponents, which is a, a separate topic, but not really, they're definitely related. If we keep this pattern going, keep dividing by 2 each time we go down a row, well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. If I cut 1 in half, half of 1 makes a half. Let's keep dividing by 2 or cutting in half. What's half of 1 half? Half of 1 half is 1 quarter. Half of 1 quarter is 1 eighth. And you can see that these negative exponents now are actually making, still making positive numbers. They just happen to be small numbers. They're fractions between 0 and 1, but they're not negative numbers. So we could keep that pattern going, and this number should keep getting closer and closer to 0, but that won't become negative unless we change the base on our exponent. So I hope that makes sense about really the main point of this video, why 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. And I think I'd like to show one more quick explanation. I think there's still time. One more explanation of why 2 to the 0 power is 1 goes back to the quotient rule, which is a, a common a law of exponents that many students learn about. And if I have 2 to the 3rd power divided by 2 to the 3rd power, let's look at that same problem twice. I know 2 to the 3rd power is 8. It's 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 8. So this problem becomes 8 divided by 8, and there's no controversy here. 8 divided by 8 is exactly 1. So I think everyone can easily agree that 2 to the 3rd power divided by 2 to the 3rd power is 1. Let's look at it again. Same problem, 2 to the 3rd divided by 2 to the 3rd. This time, let's use the quotient rule, which you may know. The quotient rule says when we're dividing numbers with exponents, if the bases are the same, we can subtract the exponents. So this problem becomes 2 to the 3rd power minus another 3. 2 to the 3 minus 3 power, which is 2 to the 0 power. So this same problem, 2 to the 3rd divided by 2 to the 3rd, is 1, and it results in the answer of 2 to the 0 power, which means these two answers must be the same. 2 to the 0 power must be 1. So there's another explanation. I hope that makes sense. I think it's important to not only know that 2 to the 0 power is 1, but also to see why. And I guess if we extend this a little further, we could use any base. So we could use another example. We could say 157 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Or 2,352 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Any number raised to the 0 power is going to be equal to 1. I hope that helps.